How many times have you found yourself scrounging for unused commercial boxes that you can fit your gift into? And how many times have you wanted a box without all the printed commercial information inappropriate to the gift? Well, you can make your own professional looking boxes customized to the sizes of the items you intend to put in. Just simply use the template and the formula guide that I've linked below. And in the next few minutes, I'll explain how to use the template and the formula guide. A disassembled box looks like this. And that's the basis of the template. The primary dimensions of a box are the length, L, width, W, and the height, H. Another primary dimension to consider is the closure insert, designated J, underneath the box. It joins the whole box together when it's assembled. This is the template with each dimension labeled. Notice the primary dimensions length, width, height, and J in capital letters. The small letters are the secondary dimensions. They are no less important. To determine the values of each dimension, you need this guide to make your computations. Just take note that L is always the longer side vis-a-vis -vis W. Now let's make one box together. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you use metric or English measurements. Here let's assume we want the box to have a length of 7 inches, width of 5 inches, and height of 6 inches. Let's enter the L, W, and H values in the formula guide, then compute for J. Note that J is an approximation within the range indicated. The computed result is between 3.5 and 2.3 inches, and I picked a practical rounded off number of 3 inches. Continue computing the secondary dimensions. For dimensions with approximate value, just take the nearest rounded off value. Lastly, compute the minimum length and width of the cardboard that you are going to use. Next, transfer all the computed values to the template. Now let's see if the cardboard I selected is the correct size. Here you see the length and width of the cardboard I chose are greater than the computed values. So this cardboard is the right size and I'm ready to draw the outline following the template using the computed values. Take advantage of the straight edges on the left side and upper side of the cardboard to lessen the number of cuts you have to make. Use any long ruler to measure and draw. A framing square, as shown, can make it easier. Here is the completed outline on the cardboard. I further transferred the values to the cardboard here just for illustration, but you do not need to do this. Next, using either a pair of scissors or a box cutter, cut the outline based on the thick lines indicated in the template. Do not cut along the thin lines as they are fold lines. This is the cardboard with the cuts completed. Do not forget to cut this flat. Now we are ready to fold along these thin lines. Using a blade and a metal ruler, just make a shallow cut along the thin lines. Take care not to cut all the way through. This shallow cut makes it easier to fold. By the way, if you are using a corrugated cardboard, do not use a blade. Use the tip of a slotted screwdriver instead.
like so. This is the cardboard with folds completed. But before final assembly, cut some tapers on these flaps as shown. These tapers are important for good final assembly. Again, showing you where the tapers are. Now you're ready to assemble. Just follow along how it's done here. Finally, use a multi-purpose glue or paste to bind the glue tab to the adjacent flap. Let it dry for a few hours, then it's ready to use. Here, a little peek inside. There you have it. As a reminder, I've included the links to the template and the guide below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share, and please subscribe.